scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. If you're a businessman, you're a preacher, you are, you are an, a leader of any sort, once you have subscribed to the government of heaven, you must limit your operations to be consistent with the ways of God. We must edit our principles and practices. Are we together now? To ensure and insist that we are always within the boundary of that which is consistent with how God acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is a concise and sufficient compendium of the earth work of Jesus. It was not just one verse, one chapter different scenarios and you would see the way Jesus responded that should be a lesson to us when you are becoming a believer in experience a mature believer would I say you need to understand that you must constrain yourself to live by the modus operandi of the kingdom it is inconsistent with the way God works that when you see somebody in need especially if it's something that does not cost you anything to help and provide that need and you ignore it the bible says uh, how does he put it now it says do not withhold that which is good when it is within your power a small child is crying and 50 naira can solve the child's problem but then you shout and say i'm a christian i'm a prayer giant and you pass the person he gave the story of the good samaritan as a lesson there were three people the priest the levite they were focused on religiosity and spiritual spirituality and they ignored the man dying and then there was a samaritan you see that now remember that the samaritan and the jews they had nothing in common they were always at points of conflict but now he saw this man who was beaten and left for dead the bible says he embalmed the person treated the person took him to a hotel and kept him there and told the man please take care of him if there are any extra bills on my return and jesus said among all of them paraphrasing who demonstrated god likeness true spirituality is beyond just prayer and fasting it must be demonstrated in our ability to give the character of love which is the foundation of the Christian faith is unforgiving. you are not called to solve everybody's problem so let me balance it so that careless people don't ride on this message and become a burden to people there are people who will like what I've said now and say uncle you see apostle has said you must pay my school fees pay my house rent while you are crossing your hand and being irresponsible no as much as God is love God does not endorse irresponsibility say amen hallelujah because you know the bible said be careful how you hear there are people who hear all kinds of things while a preacher is shouting and laboring that you receive truth they just hear the parts that relates to their lust and they now go around harassing people and saying you claim to be a christian you have the money to just buy a house for me hallelujah the word is enough for the wise so his character his ways let me give you the last one and then we'll pray to the unknown god you want to demystify the unknown god as far as our walk in the earth is concerned the last dimension of him that you must press is the knowledge of his power the knowledge of his character helping you to understand who he is the knowledge of his ways 
helping you to know how to function in the kingdom within the limit and the boundary of his will now the knowledge of his power please listen to this one because here is where the administration of your authority and your power the zenith of your dominion is at the mercy of this knowledge the knowledge of his power psalm 63 and verse 2 Verse 1 says, O Lord, give us verse 1. Let's do 1 and 2. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. So he's seeking God. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Why? Verse 2. To see thy power. Not just to see your face. Not just to know your ways. But now to see your power, God's power can be seen and thy glory. So I have seen thee in the sanctuary. You can know his power. Matthew 22 and verse 29. Here's what Jesus said. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. What is the word err? You will walk in error. You will walk in confusion. You will walk in defiance and in deviation to God's preset pattern. When you do not know his ways, like I taught earlier, and you do not know his power, that means the power of God can keep a man in the will of God. In fact, the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things in alignment with the will of God. I have taught you here that outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into the will of God. The power of God only stops working when triggered by faith. It only stops working when that issue, that matter, or that person has come into perfect alignment with the will of God. So when you see a sick person and you release the healing power, the healing anointing, what is the assignment of the healing power? The healing power does not, it doesn't just come there to heal the person. It scans that man's life and sees what aspect of his health is inconsistent with the will of God. And like a drug in your body, it begins to correct depending on the dimension and the gravity of the power released. It can bring you into perfect alignment. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? You want to know God? You have not truly known God as far as it is given to us if you do not know his power. Ephesians 1, 18. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. This Paul was a powerful man. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Watch all the things he wants them to know. That ye may know, number one, what is the hope of his calling. Number two, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Read 19 if you're a Christian, please. Ready? One to read. What is the third thing he wants us to know? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Let me stretch it to 21 verse 20. That mighty power that was exerted, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, 21. Far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but even that which is to come. Do you know the implication of obeying Paul's prayer or praying that Paul's prayer becomes your prayer? Let me tell you the truth. There is no weakness for the believer who knows the power of God. Mm -mm. And this is beyond the realm of miracles and signs and wonders. There are infinite possibilities that can flow through the life of a believer 
Paul is saying, I see your weakness in terms of your weakness. You are not able to be effective witnesses. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. When it has to do with being a witness, it is good to know God's character. It is good to know God's ways. But in the face of curses and yokes, and the arsenals of darkness, the gates of hell that wants to prevail over God's people. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know his power. You need to know his power. It is the revelation of God's power that brings you into unquestionable dominion. 1 Samuel 17, 44 to 47. The story that I started earlier on. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, Goliath now, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Look at the reply of a young boy who had encountered the power of God. Then David said to the Philistine, and ladies and gentlemen, today that Philistine can be anything that speaks to you. It can be sickness, it can be life, it can be limitations. David replied the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. We can spend all night teaching what this name is. The Lord of hosts. The literal Hebrew translation is the captain of the angel army. Some versions will say the 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 captain of the angel army. If you read vers vers versions like um, um, maybe the message or New Living Translation, they will give you greater perspective as to this. It says, beautiful, I come to you message now in the name of God of the angel armies. Do you know what that means? It is an office that every president has. In Nigeria, we call it the grand commander. You see that now? That status that is given a civilian, even if he becomes president. You are in charge of the entire armed forces. And it is only at your final command that war is executed or prohibited. So he said, I come to you in the name. There is something I know about God and his power that when he gives a command, you are dead. It is in that name I come. Let's finish the scripture. Back to KJV 45. 1 Samuel 17, 45. Now you understand? I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Watch this. Reading 46 now. This day, this gentleman is not just prophesying. He's speaking from the abundance of his revelation about the God who gave him the bear, the God who gave him the lion, that he tore the lion and the bear. If you meet a bear in the forest, run as you pray. Run as you pray. Don't pray alone and stand there. Run as you pray because you most likely may not survive. Those animals are vicious. And worst is a lion. Do you climb a tree to be safe? Do you jump into the river to be safe? Number one, what will even take you there? That's what we must probe. What took you there? Most likely disobedience would have taken you there. Hallelujah. Are we together? This day, the Lord will deliver thee. Who else in the Bible made this kind of bold statement? Bible knowledge. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those three young boys, when they stood before Nebuchadnezzar, staring as that idol, that 90 feet statue made of gold, they said, oh king, we've been taught to honor, but in this matter, we will not respect you on that. Our God is able to deliver us, and he will, but that even if he does not deliver us, for sure, bowing down to you. Mm -mm. Yesterday, I was tired, and I was just resting in the living room, um, just for a while, and then I saw this children's cartoon, and that was super book. And it was that story. I decided to watch it preparing for this sermon. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and you see the children's cartoon, you, you, I mean, you needed to see what the power of God did in that cartoon. Rubbish that furnace for nothing. And the, the fourth man who was in that fire said, oh, thou fourth man, please stand with me, oh. 
tomorrow as I teach. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's finish that scripture. We're reading to 47. I hope you are learning. It says, I will give, he's prophesying to Goliath now. I will smite thee and take your head from you. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Not just that there is a mighty young boy who is standing to face a giant. It says, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, but the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. There are many mountains and many battles you will confront in your life as a believer. Many of you are standing before them now. Financial battles, marital battles, health battles. Are we together? And all kinds of things. In these days that there are mysterious devilish sicknesses. Someone just wakes up in the morning and you feel pain here. You just go to the hospital thinking they will tell you you didn't rest well. And they'll say, ah, we don't like what we're seeing in this machine. When did you start having this pain? He said, just last week. Say this is already stage two. In the name of Jesus, the revelation of God's power will terminate everything my father has not planted in your body. <laughs> Hallelujah. To know the power of God. To know the power of God. You cannot bear witness to the truth. You cannot prove a God that you have not seen and known his power. When he told Moses, I am that I am, it did not stop there. He told him, he said, all right, here's what will happen. Moses, what are you holding in your hand? He said, a road. He said, cast it down. When Moses threw it down, it became a serpent. And Moses moved away from it. He said, draw nigh. Don't be afraid. Pick it from the tail. And Moses picked it and it became a rod. And he said, hold this rod wherewith you would walk signs and wonders. Put your hand in your bosom. Brought it out and it was leprous. Put it back. Brought it out and it was normal. That means anything you see Pharaoh doing, don't be afraid. I have used your own body to act out my power to you. Moses was on his way. He went to knock. Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, look at this stupid guy. You ran away for 40 years to the wilderness. And now you are back looking like somebody who was rejected with some careless message that the God of the Hebrews, you think we are stupid people in Egypt? Moses said, I don't have time to waste discussing with you. He threw his rod on the ground. Pharaoh looked at him and said, shame on you. If this is what you brought to make me bring God's people out. Mm -mm. Janus, Jambas, bring your rod. And they threw their rods. And when it became a serpent, do you know how if you don't know God well, when the devil does what you think God can do, you will now run away. Nine plagues, ten plagues. Just because you saw one, does that mean that is all? There is a plague that Pharaoh and his wizards cannot reproduce. After nine plagues and stubborn Pharaoh said it's not enough, God said, I know what to do. They know the implication of firstborns. Don't worry, allow them. And that night, the angel of death swept over Egypt. They woke up with a lamentation. The firstborns were all dead. When you study now, uh, you study these things with caution. Don't just go and read something that will make you start seeing spirits. Are we together now? When you are exploring extra biblical materials, you do it with maturity and with wisdom. Are we together now? A believer who just got born again, there are books you should not expose yourself into. You would destroy yourself and you would dwindle your faith. But when you study, even if it's Egyptian cytology, you know that they dedicated their firstborns to gods. There was a mystery of the strength of Egypt that was shrouded in their firstborns. You could kill all their children, go ahead, but not their firstborns. So when God was visiting the firstborns, there was something that happened there. And at the end of it, Pharaoh said, go. Give them gold, give them anything. Let them go, let them go. Please leave this place. And as soon as they left, he came to pursue them again. And this time around, God made, he did something that Pharaoh wondered. The Red Sea opened. And when they stepped into it, the Red Sea buried them completely. If the Red Sea can bury, can bury Pharaoh, there is nothing it cannot bury. Every spirit and every manifestation of darkness 
that keeps saying I will keep you bound your children will join you here your grandchildren will join you here in the name of Jesus the same way that sea opened Hitha and Tita and buried Pharaoh and his armies everything that is not by my God from my God and with the permission of my God I decree and declare let it be buried forever Now you understand David Dam's song. Only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There is a third part I have not learned. That's the part I want you to sing. I always sing stanza one and two. Sing it for us. There are chains. Listen. There are curses. But no evil can stand your power. Only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen to me. Power is the ability to cause change. Many times the ability to force change. Psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you ladies and gentlemen the end time church is a church of power power not just to become but power against power to become is the engracing that makes you become like Christ in terms of transformation Power against reveals the warrior dimension of the believer. The Bible says to put on the whole armor of God. You know how you put the whole armor of God? In your mind and by your speakings. That is how you put the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God is a consciousness. And then the reality of it is activated as you speak with understanding. So Paul paints a picture of a warrior, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. He gives you the description of a warrior because he reminds you that the earth is not just a playground. The truth is that the, the Bible says that the flesh lusted after the spirit, the spirit lusted after the flesh and that consistently, day two, the mystery of Cain and Abel, there is a contention of the old and the new man. Satan, the gates of hell, fighting the church and the purposes of God. Believers, you can be wise in terms of the knowledge of principles, but can I tell you the truth? The days that are before us, please listen to me, we're about to pray. The days that are before us are times that will necessitate power, power, genuine spiritual power you want to see the sick healed it takes more than sympathy you need power how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts 10 38 with the holy ghost and with power my bible says he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. The next verse says the people gave heed with one accord to those things which Philip spake. Why? Because they heard and they saw the miracles that he did. A generation of power will also be the generation of glory. To see your power and your glory. You cannot see glory without power. Hallelujah. The spirit of glory was also the spirit of power. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. I have told you again and again and I will repeat it. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Do not begin your faith adventure in this kingdom, especially within this complicated time. As a man of God, a businessman, a leader, without sorting the revelation of genuine power. Accessing power is progressive, but there is a threshold measure of spiritual power you need to begin your journey because you are treading very, very complicated and delicate spiritual terrains. Satan will kill anything he can kill, destroy anything he can destroy, and power is what may afford you the longevity of stay and impact. Hallelujah. 
there are forces i was we're having a wonderful time with our school of ministry students by the way i hope you are warming up for their graduation coming soon we're going to announce it. it will be a beautiful time these people have been i think we should appreciate them they have been so committed and very very diligent hallelujah i have not only read that there are spirits i have seen spirits i have encountered i've shared with you some of these encounters in the bit of time that god has given me serving his purposes in ministry i have ministered to people and i have seen the extent of darkness and evil and wickedness I have seen a bit of how Satan can go, how far he can go, as far as destroying glorious destinies are concerned. And there are times that I've seen graciously and with all humility, the power of God. You don't know why I get excited about the miracle services. All services are, you know, services that bring blessings, but because we have dedicated the miracle service to minister to God's people, that in a moment, an age-long captivity lives just like that. Power hallelujah many of you this is why you came to church tonight i do not doubt your encounter with the character of god there are things about god that you know but there are things about god you do not know some of you you are yet to encounter his power please try to listen to my message the value of encounters you need an encounter with the power of god if you want to sojourn in this wicked world it takes power to clear every mountain that stands before you and to keep making strategic kingdom progress. There are forces that will not rest till you are brought down. And may God help you that you rise to the highest position. We're discussing this with our precious students yesterday, I think he was. And we're talking about the reality of the evil of the times. This is not to scare you, but the truth is the truth. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I think it was someone I prayed for. I don't know if I've shared the story here. And this person just hit a stone. Just something that looks like a stone. And then the leg begins to swell. And then you treat it in the hospital and it does not go down. Is that a stone? You went to school. Is that a stone? No. Arrows that fly by day. Noisome pestilences. Destructions that waste in noonday. And in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for someone here. If for any reason you have been a victim of any of these arsenals of darkness, my Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. I decree and declare in the name of he who died and is today exalted and seated at the throne of the Father, be delivered this moment now. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are regions where people do not rise. There are territories where people do not rise. There are regions, help that gentleman. There are regions where ministries do not rise. Help that lady, please. We're about to pray. Are we together now? Yes. I have seen regions. There are territories that have territorial spirits that define that civilization or otherwise. You do not understand power. You tore those regions. You will look like the city. They will bring you down. To reflect the city there are families where men are the women and women are the men and those who dare to rise beyond a certain threshold are caught short in shame untimely death for reasons you cannot explain this is not to scare you so you can find people who stay abroad for 20 years 30 years and they return back with nothing forces are real jesus did not hide the fact that those forces were on earth and they are everywhere. The whole world lieth in wickedness. This is where the ministry of power comes. No matter the quality of ingredients you have to cook, I taught you, if you don't set it on fire, there will not be a meal there. Mix the tomato, mix the rice, all of them will be at the mercy of fire. It's fire that does the remaining business. There is what your knife cannot do that only fire will do. There is what your, your chefry prowess cannot do. Only fire. Are we together now? Your knife cannot turn solid to liquid. No, but put it under fire and watch what happens. 
it is only fire that can expose the viper that is hidden in the log of wood when fire comes every viper hiding it must come out and be revealed to be dealt with for as long as there is no fire there the serpent will be masquerading there moving it in your body from head to toe and you are wondering what is moving in my body like this and the only thing they are telling you is that something is growing within your system hallelujah the fire of the Holy Ghost an encounter with the power of God let me recap one last time and then we'll pray that if you want to transit your knowledge from the unknown God like the man in Athens to a God that you know that you serve that you can boldly tell the world come and join me serve this God come and join me serve this God come and join me give to this God come and join me love this God come and join me worship this God come and join me exalt this God come and join me speak the purposes of this God if you do not want to mislead a generation through ignorance then you must transit your knowledge and stop building an altar committing your devotion to an unknown God he can be known his character can make him known his ways is one way he can be known and finally his power can I tell you you don't see wind but you can see the effect of wind it will pick up a zinc you watch tornadoes and they will sweep buildings that were put with cement and sweep them like children playing football hallelujah this is the God we serve you want a generation to turn away from idols and to turn away from other gods and look to the God of the Bible, it takes more than an evangelistic discussion. You will need to tell a generation, behold the power of this God who sent us. That power is translated in healings, miracles, restorations, that whole families come under that, that, that influence of his power. And in one day, one moment, Captivity is taken away from people. Healings are happening. You speak to someone. Can I tell you, on account of that manifestation of power, in one day, by the time God helps you as a preacher, as a businessman, as a politician, as a believer, as a witness, and you demonstrate certain levels of his power. I know people today with all due respect and humility, if not because they saw a display of God's power to the level that dumbfounded their minds, they would never come to church they would never come to God power is not just in terms of transformation creating change that someone who will tell you I had HIV this is the medical report I didn't believe in God because I was angry now here is my result I had cancer stage 4 now look at it medically verified how do you deny that someone you know who was on a wheelchair is today pushing his wheelchair somewhere and running around healthier than you someone grounded and left for dead raised up by the power of the holy spirit ladies and gentlemen we need our generation to see a display of his power again power reminds all men that there is a god that sits in heaven when men forget god he uses his power to remind them of his person there is a generation that may not seem to really respect character as important that, as that is. God has never used character to call the attention of a rebellious generation. He uses his power. When he gets the attention, he now begins to teach them his ways and then finally brings them into conformity with his character. Are we together now? When a rebellious generation or a generation that is bedeviled in any way when God wants to call their attention, Elijah did not stand there singing praises and dancing. It was the power of God. Same with Gideon. Same with the three Hebrew boys. The pattern has always been first a display of his power. I'm the only one who is saved in a family of 10 people. Let them see a demonstration of God's power beyond falling down and standing up, beyond just speaking gibberish as a preacher power supernatural solutions by the Spirit of God that a man who you knew at January could not pay his house rent was not serious but he started coming to church by June
God has lifted him, changed his story, wiped his tears, healed the sick. Hapa, ladies and gentlemen, men have not grown to a level of civilization where the power of God becomes of non effect. The power of God is at the fabric of human living and it will be forever. You may not need a typewriter now again. You may not need certain things. You may not need certain elementary basic kinds of phones because technology has gone. But one dimension that will never be outdated is the power of God. If you have the power of God, you are current for all seasons. Hallelujah. There are things that if you studied before with respect to the world now, you may need to reinvent yourself, but not power. It's a language that is understood in all realms. As for me, oh, I told you last week, I have made a commitment under God. I am not satisfied with the level of power. I thank God for the wonderful things he has done. But with respect to the heights and the dimensions we seek to step into, to represent the purposes of Jesus, there is a dimension of God's power that can save a nation in one day. We need to tap into that frequency. You are a man of God, you must thank God for what he has done, but not camp around it. Oh, I'm an evangelist. I go to preach, there are five people getting saved. Thank God for it, but you cannot stay like that. Five people in a territory full of idolatry, idolatry and all kinds of things? No. Read your Bible and see how nations were saved in one day. By the time five dead people rise up in one week, verified through your hands under God, with the glory going to God, it becomes too notable to be ignored. I've seen these things in my vision, so there are days before us, but it takes stamina and hunger and press. I've prayed to God many times and said, Lord, take away anything that will bring complacency in my life. The cancer of arrival mentality drive it out of my life let me seek you like I've never found you let me seek you like I do not know so much because it is true I do not know much there are still heights this was the hunger of Paul that I may know him that I may know him that I may know him a man who was killed he got up dusted himself and came back to life until his assignment was over have you tapped into that realm? Only a sure will reign forever. To your kingdom there'll be no end. There are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. But only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end only a shoe only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end only a shoe only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end in one of my visions were wrapping up many years ago I was in a building no I came out of a building and it was like coffee was declared in a territory and I was standing there and every normal healthy human being had gone inside the only people who were outside are people who were deformed maimed distressed they were sitting in mats and lined up I found myself in the midst of people with all kinds of pain and sorrow. Not just medical situations, not just biological deformities, but these were people dejected like the men of David. And when I looked at them, I said, what kind of thing? I mean, it was an ugly description. It's not something anybody who loves God should see and be happy. No matter, even if your heart is a heart of stone, it will be crushed till it becomes a heart of flesh. And I saw them, they were helpless. And I remember hearing a voice, an audible voice in that vision. And he spoke to me and he said, heal them all. This is not just physical healing, the healing anointing alone. 
that was one of the things that made me to go and start looking for the materials of Charles and Francis Hunter and Ampi Semple McPherson and I said no there's something our generation has not touched let's go back the secret of the future is in the past we need to go back and I began to study I still have their materials today it's still a project I'm on I don't know what those people did with God that brought them certain levels of grace hallelujah certain levels of grace these men carried grace they carried grace may God revive us oh may God revive us in the name of Jesus may God revive us may God revive us and make us empowered to be able to heal our land hallelujah some of the miracles we celebrate today sincerely they were the people who were the workers and the ushers in those ministries that worked in it now we thank God for what he has helped us do the things we celebrate today will not even be clapped at during their days they were men who were like gods Smith Wigglesworth raises somebody who was dead and kept the person and tells him to jack back to life he falls down like a pack of cards lifts him again he falls down and by the third time the man sniffs and then he comes back to life that was a casual miracle a group of people look at um, not Catherine Kuhlman now what's her name the other woman Maria Woodward Eater and they insulted her and she just looked at them and said the Lord judge you and the tongue of one of them protruded like a cancer and remained there till a committee came together and brought her to come and apologize and she just slapped the tongue and it went down documented in history and fear came upon all you see that now the mockery that has come to the house of God is because one person has not been used as a warning that there is sanctity and honor that surrounds priesthood and that is not just by debate and shouting and all of that see ladies and gentlemen I'm challenging you tonight there is power that can come upon you as a businessman. You will do business like a spirit, not like an individual again. That there are heights you will scale. You will do certain things that will surprise men. And people will have to ask you and say, how are you doing this? And you will tell them that beyond my intellectual prowess, which is important, there are certain graces that have been stored to be poured like vials from heaven upon a generation my charge for you tonight is that you desist from knowing and uh, from from advocating an unknown god a god that is filled with gaps in your conviction gaps in your confidence that your life is plagued with all kinds of fear you may preach with confidence but live in fear you may talk with confidence but live in fear COVID was a strong lesson to us that something was wrong with our convictions that something about our confidence needed an upgrade only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no way only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end three more times only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end only a sure This is now the reason why I asked you to stand when I was praying the Lord told me that there's a few people that he's going to be raising as signs listen they are going to be demonstrators of his power signs a few people and I I first prayed for myself I said Lord I must become one of such people now I want to pray for you Lord I pray that you find men and women in the midst of your people men who will be signs signposts showing men the possibilities that are captured in this divine life therefore i stretch my hands in the name of jesus christ 
by the election of grace i decree and declare that the grace that makes you a sign and a wonder in ministry in your profession in business in family may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now rest upon you now your life ceases to be ordinary from tonight a sign and a wonder your life becomes a bible for many to read a compendium of the manifold wonders of god in the name of jesus christ only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no for some of you the sign that will rest on you is the favor of god for some of you the sign that will work will rest on you is the healing anointing for some of you the sign that will rest on you is strange influence inexplainable influence for some of you the sign that will rest on you is speed that cannot be described for some of you the sign that will rest on you is a demonstration of the gift of the spirit at a level that men have not seen for some of you the sign that god will give you is empowerment in your mind extraordinary intelligence but by all means may that sign be represented in your life i and the children that the lord has given me the bible says we are for signs for signs for signs there are worshipers that will become signs you will not just sing songs there will be mysteries from your voice to the nation there are preachers that will not just be preachers as it were but signs and wonders your life becomes a case study that men use your life to learn God financial signs arise favor signs arise intercessor signs arise in the name of Jesus Christ listen when you want to go to a restaurant that you have never been before when you are close to the vicinity and you're in doubt as to whether to turn left or right you may not have seen the actual building but you look for the signpost the signpost number one tells you you are near and then it directs you more accurately into it I'm about to pray that prayer that someone who is confused about God confused about how favor works confused about how consecration works confused about how the spirit of revelation functions in a man confused as to how men can be custodians of the mysteries of God confused as to how God can trust men with nations in the name of Jesus tonight may your life be an explanation to divine mysteries May your life be an explanation to divine mysteries. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer I speak over you. Three. His character, knowing God. His ways, knowing God. And then his power. For many of us, you have desired to know God. You have fasted, you have prayed. Now God has created a bearing for you. This tree is not all to know about God, but as far as this dimension of our existence is concerned, God will only be captured and revealed to men under these three channels. His character, his ways, and his power. Any route to knowing God beyond this, as much as scripture reveals, will only tilt you to error and divination. That any man who seeks to know God must explore God through the platform of his character, the platform of his ways, and the platform of his power. I decree and declare every dimension of that revelation that is currently deficient in your life. I call upon my God who is also your God that by his spirit who has been mandated to be the revealer of all things, even the deep things of God, may the spirit of revelation rest upon you. May the spirit of revelation rest upon you. Hello. 
scriptures exalt us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.